Hello, my name is Richard Claywell. This is Litigation Speaks. We're going to have an episode today, again, about what appraisers are doing that is incorrect. This is almost a repeat of something I did before, but it is entirely different. I want to talk to you today about how fixed assets are appraised and how they're reported in a fair market value report. I received this report about two weeks ago and it was prepared and signed by two accredited senior appraisers. Now these are guys that have to have at least 10,000 hours of work experience in order to get the ASA designation. What they did was they took, and, and I have for you all that are looking at the YouTube, a section of the balance sheet that shows what, what they did. What they've done is they've identified the various types of assets that are out there. Then what they did was they made adjustments to that, and that's typically what we do. But those adjustments typically are gap adjustments. Once we get those gap adjustments, then we adjust those to fair market value. These guys did a little bit differently. What they did was they went out and said, okay, here are those fixed assets. And we're going to estimate that the value is 75% of the original cost based upon depreciation. The problem is the depreciation that they use really has nothing to do with fair market value. When you look at the uniform standards of appraisal and practice, what winds up happening is ASAs, and I'm an ASA, are required to follow those guidelines. When you value personal property, the typical way you do that is you look at a fairly identical similar asset, you try to find the make and model of what it is, try to find out how old it is, what's the utility, how long has it been around, does it have any useful life left to that? Then you find how much those items typically sell for. If your particular item is similar to the other item and it's sold for X, then it's probably worth about X. That's the way you do it. You do not take a depreciation number for that and then say that that is fair market value. Depreciation is a methodology where you allocate certain costs over a particular time period to recoup the cost to replace the particular asset. That really has nothing to do with the fair market value of an asset. You would expect these two guys that are ASAs to know that. Unfortunately, neither one of these two individuals are CPAs. You don't necessarily have to be a CPA to do valuation work. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of criticism in the industry about CPAs doing that kind of work. The problem is you have to understand the accounting issues underlying the data that you're dealing with so you can handle it correctly. These two individuals don't have that understanding and don't know how to adjust assets to fair market value. <clears throat> When they did their analysis for this, they again, they just took 75% of the cost and said, here's what the fair market value is. One of the items that they had were leasehold improvements. They also had some franchises that were out there. And what they said on the franchises is that they really don't have any value because the buyer would not be able to acquire that particular franchise. That's an assumption, that's a valid assumption. So they reduced that value down to zero. And I don't have any problem with that whatsoever. That's fairly typical. But they also had leasehold improvements. In the example that I'm showing you here, the leasehold improvements are about $2 million. The problem with the leasehold improvements is those are usually very unique to the individual that had those improvements prepared. A hypothetical buyer does not necessarily want or need those specific improvements. Therefore, those specific improvements normally are written down to zero. There's no justification for why they left them there 
except that they took no depreciation on it. Now, that's incorrect in itself because if you have leasehold improvements, you're supposed to amortize that, not depreciate it, but you're supposed to amortize that over the life of the lease uh, or 39 years. And they did not do either one of those two. So they've left the $2 million intact. Now what that has done is this is for an estate tax. I don't know what the attributes are for the, the normal fixed assets where they've taken 75%, but I can tell you that the way they've handled the leasehold improvements is also incorrect. And what they've done is they've overstated the value of the company by $2 million. Uh, assuming for the sake of argument that you take a, say, 50% discount on, on the estate, that gets you down to a million dollars for that particular leasehold improvement. Make the math easy, a 50% tax rate. Uh, the taxpayers only overpaid $500,000 in tax because they have not handled this correctly. So look for these types of things. How are they are people explaining how they have come to fair market value? Are they just giving you a number? Are they supporting the number? And what's the justification for the support? These can have significant consequences to the taxpayer. Uh, again, this is for an estate, but this can also have a major impact on a litigation case because these are incorrect and people are not picking up on these types of issues that are out there. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe. Have a safe and happy Thanksgiving weekend. Look forward to seeing you in the